Um, you should not expect to be celebrated, you know. Um, because I, I think there's a mindset that we have, you know. I hear people saying we're going Maju, you know, and there's so much clamor to go overseas, but there's not the reality of the situation on the ground. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's Lifestyle Thursday. It's uh, 28th of January, the year is ending and um, today I just want to talk about some of my experiences. I hear people like to hear all my stories, it's just been going here, you want to hear the story, the deep, deep story of what has happened, but um, maybe today I was going to talk about, I think my experiences like in the UK. Um, so one of the experiences I had was um, when I got to the UK, uh, I was living on, in halls of residence. And so there were these rooms, I can't remember the number, and then at the end or in the middle of the, of the, of the corridor uh, of the hallway, there was uh, a set of showers, showers uh, and toilets and bathrooms and everything. So in the winter, I would find myself as the only one showering. And um, I did, it, did, it didn't strike me as odd at first. Um, so I'd shower in the evening and I'd shower in the morning. But I, I was always the one there. And then... Um, I moved into a house with, I think, five, because we're six, five uh, roommates, uh, people from all over the region, uh, the British um, region, the country. And that was another problem. So when I moved in, I was then, uh, there was an argument, there was a meeting. And the meeting was about um, that I have to pay more for water and electricity because I shower more. And I remember laughing and saying, that's okay, just, you know, carve out the part that's my bill. Um, and I never thought about it as odd, but I was, it was really strange that that I come from a culture where people shower twice a day, you know, and that's just what I continued with. It would be interesting to hear your your stories on this, you know, and it was amazing that people could stay a week without having a shower. Uh, <laughs> some would go to the to the shower to wash their hair and then come out. The strange things, you know, you think stranger than fiction. And then also people would really, they do French baths, they'd be very well perfumed, they'd smell well, but they were not going to the bathroom, you know, and for me I was like, wow. When I thought about it later, I was, I was recanting this story uh, to a few people and they were very amused um, with my story, but it's actually very strange. I think it's good that we're clean and of course there are some activists, I'm always talking about activists around Africa, so they were like, yeah, you know, we were very clean as Africans. Uh, we had all these uh, shea butter, coconut oils. I love black soap, you know. Um, black soap really, I, I, I clean myself with black soap because it really cleans the skin. But we were, you know, we have all these things and we were, we were very clean people. We knew how to keep ourselves clean. We had different hairstyles for our hairs and we'd be able to identify us from the way that we did our hair. So that was something that I just wanted to share. That was one of my fun facts. And then maybe just to say this as well. I think there's a lot of us who are trying to go overseas and to live overseas and, and get out of this nation and country. But you have to also understand something. I used to get different reactions. Um, when African people were taking me to the airport, whether they were Ethiopian, Nigerians, Kenyans, wherever they were from, they'd always be surprised. They'd be, you're going back to Africa. And I'm like, yes, I am. And I'd be so excited. And they're like, why are you so excited? They said, because I love my life. I love my life, I love my country, I've, been, I've had the opportunity to live outside the country and I always want to come back. And then it also seems like a family thing because everyone who's gone comes back, you know, nobody wants to stay. And it's, it's okay for those who go and stay, but we have never felt a need to go and stay. We've always wanted to come back home. And I always ask why, why, why do you ask that question like that? And um, so they're there, they are struggling, they are doing all sorts of jobs. Some have, by God's grace, gotten really good jobs. Others haven't got very good jobs. But I think my message was for you to remember, when you come into a nation that is not your nation, you start at the bottom. I'm just thinking, it's just me. It's me, not, it's not been written anywhere, but you know, they're the Caucasians, then they are probably, maybe the African-Americans, then maybe the Mexicans, because they came after that, uh, the Mexicans, the Latino community, and then maybe, if I use a country like the US, then now come the Africans. You know, you are, you are completely at the bottom of this pyramid if there is one, you know. And that's an, an expectation you should have. Um, you should not expect to be celebrated, you know. Um, because I, I think there's a mindset that we have, you know. I hear people saying we're going Maju, you know. And there's so much clamor 
to go overseas, but there's not the reality of the situation on the ground. Let me jump to another story. When people used to go to the States, they used to buy a car. But when I went there is when you realize the distances are crazy. And the public um, system in some of the, of, the, of, the, of the states is not very good. And it's not all of them. Like I remember in Orlando, I was able to get around on the bus. It was very good. The bus system was working. It was great. LA took a bit of longer to figure out how to travel and take the train. So it's, it's because they have long distances to cover. I saw some states where there's no even pathway. They have not, they, they, in their, there's no place for people to walk. That is not a plan, so you can't walk somewhere because there's no even pathway for you to walk. And then the distances are very, um, they're, they're, they're long. So that's why people buy a car, because a car is not a, a, a luxury, you need it to get around. You need to get it from point A to point B. They are very big spaces and long spaces, so I don't know why that came into my spirit as well. But remember, and that's why maybe even when people move into a, a place, I remember I one of my goals was to go to Chinatown in, in New York, and I, I think I did, I think I passed it on the bus. Um, but that's why then people go to a place and then they congregate around an area, because you want to be with your, with your people, that's what you want, you know? You want to be with your people, you want to be comfortable, because you're a foreigner. And you know, as a foreigner, you have to behave a certain way. So many stories are coming to mind. Um, my daughter is very brave. Uh, brave is good, but for me, I'm like, gosh. So she, even she got there, we had international driving licenses, but she rented a car and she's driving. And I'm like, Althea, first of all, when you're in somebody else's land, please eh, behave like a visitor. Like when I come to your house, you must behave in a manner like you to suggest that this is not your house, you know? And that's what I'm trying to portray to her. But she wasn't getting it, which sometimes is a good or a bad thing. Like she's like, what's up with you, mom? Why do you always try to play down things for everyone? We are here, I can drive, I have an international driving license, we are moving. But every time I'm, I'm more, I'm more afraid, I'm more guarded. Because I'm in a foreign land. Here I can drive everywhere and by God's grace I've driven for 30 years. I've not I've had an accident by the grace of God. But I'm still not comfortable driving in somebody else's land. First, if we're driving on the same side of the road, that is okay, I'll try. But if we're driving on the opposite side of the road, my mind has been, has been scripted to do certain moves on the road. Maybe sometimes when you just drive automatically, like on autopilot. So how do I do that? in a nation when we even drive on the opposite side of the road. But kudos to her, she was very brave, she drove, we were very happy. I, I, she owes me a new heart because the number of times I almost had heart attacks. Um, um, we're very different, so me I'll say, like I'll see the traffic light like four lights away. Even one day she had her dad, because of her dad, he said, that light, and they burst out into laughter. Me, um, yeah, we have to be safe, we have to plan, we have to see ahead, I'm planning for every eventuality. It's like maybe I'll end by saying, you know, when, when people drive here from other nations, I, yeah. I mean, they're not ready. Because you, when you get on the road, you're thinking, I have to look out for my tattoos, pedestrians, if one raindrop falls. <laughs> now I have to look for people who are jumping on the road. It's like they fear the rain more than they fear the cars. I mean, I'm conditioned. I'm conditioned for my driving environment and what I'm going to do in that environment. So I always find like if you bring a foreigner here, it's, I think they're brave to drive because they don't understand the, 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 the rules, the subculture that is, that is involved on the road, the things that people don't tell you that are particularly true to us. And that's why when I go to another country, I want to know what is true to their culture. So maybe I'll try to study it first before I get in the car and drive. But then again, that's me. So I've told you many things. I don't know my stories of, anyway, they can't be finished. One day I'll, I'll, um, I'll give you more. So enjoy Lifestyle Thursday. I'll see you next week where we continue just discussing life. God bless you. Mm -hmm.